I'm going to show 10 of my favorite Max devices, five free ones and five paid ones. I'm not sponsored at all. I just really like all of these. I'm linking all of the devices in the description below, by the way. So I'm going to start with my five favorite free ones listed in no particular order. I'm going to demonstrate with my Artifactory Overkill Rack for my rack pack. So this is High Frequency Limiter by GM Audio. You can basically pick a threshold to limit your high frequencies at. I can get this really harsh sound and then like make it more bearable. You're mostly just getting like the body of the sound. And you can hear what you're cutting out when you press the solo button. So super helpful alternative if you can't afford something like Sue and you still want to keep your high end in your sounds. Next I want to show Palmas. This is basically just an instrument device. It gives you a bunch of different variation of clap each time. So this is something I would like resample if I were to use this in a song. You can like pitch the claps over here with this loopy knob. Control the width with this red one down here. Control how many hands are involved. And then this kind of controls the spread in time of the hands, like kind of like a strumming effect in a way. And this is your uh, minimum velocity knob over here. Super helpful for like build ups or if, like you're layering with claps or snares or anything like that. Back to our saw wave, I wanna show this inverter by Nathan. This basically turns the waveform inside out. So over here you can kind of see this first waveform is without the inverter and the second waveform is with the inverter. Sounds kind of cool. This can like make a lot of interesting new sounds. This is MIDI to EQ8. It'll basically detect the frequency of note you're playing and output it to a value specifically for EQ8. Say if I want to, uh, I can just map this number to the EQ8 and it'll follow and you can also multiply it if you wanted to play at a specific frequency that's higher than the one. Probably get cool results if you invert it again later in the chain. And then invert it again after that. And then last of the free ones, I'll demonstrate with the wavetable. This is granular mirror maze. It's kind of like a post-processing version of granulator. If I understand this correctly, it basically randomizes the delay time with this max delay. And how fast the randomization is, is controlled by the scrub knob. And this is like similar to the grain size knob on granular. You can get a lot of cool metallic effects with this. I see the high frequency limiter being useful for this. So moving on to the to the paid devices, I've been using this uh, chain shaper for my side chain opposed to the Live 8 compressor, which um, you cannot control the curve of the box you're shaping for your kick and snare. Without any side chain, it's just gonna sound like this. With the Live 8 compressor, um, it's gonna sound like this. Here with this chain shaper, you have like direct control over the shape of this curve. And I also like how there's no numbers for the attack threshold release any of that you're just you're just visually drawing and listening and what's also different about this is that you can have a different sidechain for the low mid and high 
and I just prefer this instead of using like a utility. Next I want to show gradient by patches. Let's say I get this one preset up and make the device focus operator. Like you can do this with any device. I'm just using operator. You would store the preset that it's in right now into one of these corners. It basically has all of the parameters stored right here. So then I can change this operator to another preset. And sort right here. And then with this XY, I can scroll between the two patches. So I can even take this patch out like right here and then store it in another corner. And then let's get this basic sub base, put it in this corner. So now we can find a new preset in between all these other presets. And you can choose to exclude certain parameters. But my favorite part of this is the mutate button. So I could make this like whatever 68% and then click mutate. And right now it sounds like it's panned all the way to the right. So I might want to exclude that. And now I could save this specific preset. And I want to resample this. Now while resampling this, I want to show this other device called BIP, where you can basically map a hotkey to resample a selected track. So I make a default project and save this my default project with a hotkey. So I mapped this to tilde right here on my keyboard. So then whenever I press tilde, recording right here, tilde. It records for me without having to set up a whole new audio track and whatnot. Now say I want to automate a bunch of grain delay parameters. I can get this LFO cluster here by Kentaro. So you can basically have all of these different positions lfo at different rates essentially. So I can map one to spray here, one to feedback, one to frequency. You can also control the range. Once a delay time. Maybe once a random pitch. And then also you can shape the wave here. So our LFO is currently moving in this pattern. Then the last max device I want to show today, this is Slink Filter. It's basically a bunch of bandpass filters kind of summed up to create this like jump ropey kind of wave that goes across the spectrum. And it's cool because you can choose which areas you want it to affect. Like I could like have this low and completely protected, change the slope, but you can also control the physics of this wave here. These gravity invert, ripple and multiply knobs. You can modulate the offset invert and gravity with these basically built-in LFOs here. That's all I have for right now, but I have a lot of new videos planned with some really cool techniques that I have found at least helpful for me. I'm waiting to finish a few releases to be able to show off those new techniques. I have a new release coming very soon. I've linked all the devices in the description to the place that they can be downloaded.